okay okay in the last class we have studied about uh, the difference between mpfi and crda engines uh, so we studied about uh, uh, also we studied about the difference between the carburetor and fuel injection systems <coughs> then uh, we saw how the combustion and diesel engine occurs and uh, i have told you uh, what are this the uh, uh, how the uh, combustion in diesel engine takes place and uh, how the crda works so the crda is based upon a diesel engine and uh, crda technology is used in diesel engines so we had to know the working of uh, diesel engines hence i have uh, showed you the uh, video relating the combustion that takes place inside a diesel engine so uh, here you can also see the fuel spray here there is about uh, six sprays from six hole nozzle and that is being combusted at the power stroke that is what you have been seeing here and then uh, there is the exhaust you can also see a slight swirl inside that is a swirl there is a mixing of the fuel uh, and the air inside the combustion chamber so it is rotating in such a manner you can see a small rotation of the fuel that is because of the swirling air uh, during intake so the air intake is provided in such a way that swirl occurs inside the cylinder so uh, two uh, factors influence the movement of air inside the cylinder one is the uh, air flow from the inlet valve that is if you are sending the air in a vertical axis swirl will be much less while if you are sending it in a horizontal axis also swirl will not occur so you can see in this diagram itself you can see here in the diagram itself the pathway is kept inclined uh, rather than the exhaust see the exhaust is in horizontal direction while the pathway for the inlet valve or the intake valve is kept at an inclined portion okay this facilitates the air to enter in a swirling motion so it will come like this hit this wall and then moves like this okay that that is one of the factors influencing the airflow another factor is the shape of the piston head okay i have shown you many pistons and pistons with the holes domes and such a shapes so this shape also assists in the formation of swirl inside the cylinder this facilitates uh, mixing of uh, so this swirl in turn when we spray the fuel, the fuel is then moved along with the soil. So the air is rotating inside of the cylinder and this air carries the fuel along with it in a swirl motion. So as to mix the fuel and air effectively and provide the combustion that we require. So once the spray is sprayed inside, it immediately mixes with the air and then combusts. So it combusts by means of the high temperature and pressure generated inside the cylinder. Okay. So that was what we studied in the last class. And uh, <coughs> some points I have uh, not said in the last class. So I have added uh, for the combustion of diesel engine. Next, we have seen uh, three. I briefly explained naturally aspirated engine, supercharged engine and turbocharged engine. So in naturally aspirated engine is nothing but the engine where the air is sucked into the cylinder by means of atmospheric pressure itself. So based on atmospheric pressure, so I have uh, explained to you in the last class. So <coughs> during suction stroke, the piston moves from TDC to BDC. Once that happens, the pressure inside the cylinder will be less than atmospheric pressure. 
so atmospheric pressure is present at a higher pressure than that pressure that is existing inside the cylinder so naturally anything at atmospheric pressure can move towards the region of low pressure so the air is present at atmospheric pressure at the inlet valve so once the inlet valve is opened so during suction stroke the inlet valve is being opened and once that inlet valve is opened the air at atmospheric pressure is rushed into or sucked into the cylinder by means of this pressure difference okay it is the same principle as that of a syringe we have seen a syringe so what we are have doing is that when we pull the plunger of the syringe inside the syringe a region of low pressure is created okay and to fill that pressure of uh, to fill that region of low pressure air from the atmosphere that is at atmospheric pressure rushes into the into the syringe the same function occurs in a engine so this type of engines are called as naturally aspirated engine wherein it solely depends on the difference in pressures for combustion for the intake of air okay naturally aspirated aspirated means aspiration is same as that of respiration uh, breathing it is called naturally breathing engine okay it's a kind of breathing so it is taking in air same as that what we are doing we are inhaling air okay same thing is occurring inside the engine next there are two types of terms i have told you supercharger and turbocharger this is the schematic diagram of a supercharger so you can see here how is the supercharger connected it is connected to a compressor here a compressor which is then coupled to a belt drive that is coming from the engine okay this is the engine crankshaft so we i have shown you what is the crankshaft and the crankshaft the flywheel is present here the other is used for the other end is used for camshaft driving also okay camshaft driving is there so if the camshaft driving is there there is another point here also okay so there will be another sprocket wheel provided here with another belt drive for the camshaft in the same way one another sprocket wheel also is provided for running the compressor in the case of supercharger so this is then coupled to the compressor and from this compressor is nothing but a fan with a vane and due to the rotational motion generated inside in the principle of an exhaust gas so what happens in an exhaust gas uh, sorry the principle of an exhaust fan okay and the exhaust fan what it is doing it uh, rotates and pulls in pulls the air present inside the room and expels it outside that is what an exhaust fan does in the same way the compressor of a supercharger or the supercharger itself has a vane which rotates by the power provided by this belt drive and it sucks in the air from the atmosphere compresses it and sends it to the engine okay it compresses the air coming inside you can see the fresh air coming here it compresses it and then sends it inside so what is the advantage of compressing the air so you have studied about um, so you have heard about lpg that is liquid uh, petroleum gas and uh, cng that is compressed natural gas so what is the need for liquefying the petroleum or uh, compressing the natural gas it is nothing but liquefying petroleum gas holds more volume than the petrol present in the gaseous state okay so when you are storing the petroleum to store it more you, if you want to store it uh, if you want to store more amount of petrol 
rather than in the gaseous state you can store it more in the liquid state and even more you can store it in the solid form so that is how the state of matters we have studied about the state of matters and the most freely escaping and the most freely independent is the gaseous state then comes the liquid state then comes the solid so more volume will be present for solid state then comes the liquid state then comes the gaseous state in the same way if we are compressing the air here so compressing in the means it is being compressed not into liquid but still it is being compressed so compressing it reduces reduces the amount of air or the reduces the independency of air and holds more volume of air that is what a compressor does okay when more volume of air is then being supplied into the cylinder we will get much uh, cleaner combustion and also more power more power will be generated for that purpose a supercharger is used so you can see the effects of a supercharger when you drive a supercharged vehicle you can see that even when we are taking the vehicle from a rust that is at the first gear condition you can see significant power increase when we give the accelerator the vehicle can jump okay due to the excess power that is generated but the problem is that it takes the drive from the engine so less efficiency is being utilized okay the power that is up, that we uh, obtain at the wheels will be much lesser than a conventional engine due to the presence of taking this power from the engine itself that is the only drawback of a super charger next comes the types of supercharger so there are some types of supercharger and uh, these are a root supercharger twin screw supercharger uh, and centrifugal supercharger so these are uh, nothing uh, but these are the three types of superchargers so roots supercharger or i will explain to you twin supercharger so this is a twin screw supercharger so it is in the shape of a screw a helical screw you can see it like this and it is coupled to the shaft here so one rotation of this shaft will facilitate the rotation of this screw itself due to the engagement or the meshing of these two screws so if this screw rotates this also rotates okay so the air is sucked from this way okay air is sucked through here and then discharged to here to where the uh, compressed air is going okay you can see how the air comes in and then so the screw is rotating this one in the anti clockwise direction and this one in the clockwise direction okay that is how it is uh, rotating and air enters and discharges here so the screw movement is significantly low when compared to the other two methods so uh, these are also used these three types are used most commonly used is the centrifugal supercharger okay uh, next one is the roots supercharger so i have shown you how the roots uh, supercharger is uh, being seen so this is the root section you can see how it is shaped in a specific manner it is shaped almost as same as of this thing this is called a spinner you have seen it as a toy and all and this is a spinner in the shape of this spinner itself the roots veins are provided this is the roots veins so these are also meshed in together like the twin screw uh, supercharger and this then rotates to form the rotates to form the supercharger discharge okay then comes the centrifugal supercharger so in centrifugal supercharger this is the most commonly used type of supercharger so what happens is you can see the air intake and the exit okay there is a 
vane or a turbine provided here this compressor or this turbine works by coupling it with the this end will be coupled with the engine and once the engine rotates this fan or vane or turbine rotates and on rotation it sucks in air and swirl it at a high speed increasing or compressing the air and increasing the amount of volume of air and then discharging it to this side okay this is how a centrifugal supercharger uh, works so it is using centrifugal force so it is rotating and by rotation it provides centrifugal force and expels the air by the centrifugal action through this discharge side so these are the three types of supercharger so you can see how the supercharger works here so this is a centrifugal type so the air is sucked in and it is expelled outside as you can see here okay this is a twin screw method see you can see a twin screw uh, supercharger So this twin screw supercharger inhales the air, compresses it and gives it through the inlet manifold. You can see it here and it is going into the cylinder. So this is a V type engine with the six cylinders. Okay, V type engine with six cylinders. You can see uh, three here and also there is three here and uh, to three cylinders it is supplying here. See. You can see it here some are going here some are going here these are combust air that is supplied into the engine so this is a twin screw supercharger this is the centrifugal working of a centrifugal supercharger okay next is the turbocharged engine so in a turbocharged engine it is different from a supercharged engine where it draws power from the engine itself but in a turbocharged engine the engine uh, sorry uh, the inlet manifold is shown here the exhaust manifold is shown here and it works solely on based of exhaust gas okay it is nothing but a compressor and a turbine coupled together and this turbine is provided here at the exhaust manifold and this compressor is provided before the inlet manifold okay so once exhaust gas existing from the exhaust manifold strikes the veins of the turbine the turbine rotates okay this ro rotation facilitates the rotation of the compressor provided here okay the compressor also rotates this inhales the fresh air and compresses it and send it to the inlet manifold so you can see another component here which is called as a intercooler and this intercooler is provided for lowering the temperature of air that is coming from the compressor so why have to why do we have to lower the temperature we are lowering the temperature so as to uh, reduce the temperature and increase increase the volumetric efficiency of the engine so what is volumetric efficiency if more amount of air is being breathed or inhaled into the engine then the volumetric efficiency is higher so that means the more the volume of air is entering into the cylinder okay so the air that is being in inhaled through the compressor will be much once it is being compressed it will become hotter okay hotter in the sense because the exhaust gas will be at a higher temperature and this temperature will be uh, transferred to the turbine and the turbine is coupled to the compressor and this coupling results in temper naturally results in the temperature of the compressor being higher 
and this higher temperature affects the temperature of air which will be also higher due to the temperature at the compressor and also due to the compression pressure due to two factors the temperature of air increases and this air has to be cooled down by means of an intercooler which is nothing but the same as that of a, a radiator function and then it is being supplied into the cylinder by means of the intake manifold okay this is how it works so the turbocharger is an improvement of a supercharger so it does not take the engine power itself but the exhaust which is a byproduct which we don't require and we are utilizing it so it is a positive type of charging method but the only problem of turbocharger is that turbocharger solely depends upon exhaust yes so at the situation of arrest so the, when the vehicle is at rest or starting from rest the exhaust gas generation and the temperature of exhaust gas will be significantly low okay so to start a turbocharger it takes some time once sufficient exhaust is developed and the flow of exhaust is much faster and also if the temperature of exhaust is higher so these three factors depend for starting of turbocharger okay that is the only difference of a turbocharger so you can see how the working of turbocharger is taking place so this is how it is taking place uh, the air is inhaled through this uh, so you don't have to look at the rotation okay and just uh, telling you how the um, working is occurring so the air enters here it goes to this part is the intercooler goes there and into the intake manifold into the cylinder okay the exhaust gas which is passing through the exhaust manifold enters the turbine this is a turbine here and at the turbine it rotates the turbine and provides power to the compressor and the compressor in turn compresses the air and send it to the engine this is how the turbocharger works so you can see how the <coughs> turbocharger is working here so you can see there is a four cylinders and from these four cylinders exhaust are collected and this exhaust will be passed to the turbine this is the turbine portion of the engine so you can see at a time one exhaust is only coming out okay i have told you before itself uh, at each cylinder different strokes occur so only at, at a time one cylinder has exhaust gas exhaust gas is generated okay this exhaust is then transferred to the turbine and this turbine uh, rotates and this rotation in turn rotates the compressor here okay this is the air filter and the filtered air is then passed to the compressor this is a centrifugal type of compressor or a centrifugal type uh, uh, sorry centrifugal type of compressor provided coupled with the turbine and then this is compressed and sent to the inlet manifold from the inlet manifold it goes into the cylinder okay so you can see there are two ports here okay inlet valve there are two ports here so, so significantly higher amount of air is entering into the cylinder okay this is how a turbocharger and supercharger works so this is another uh, i'll show this is another turbocharger working so you can see how the air swirls this is the exhaust this red part is the exhaust so the exhaust gas is applied like this so you can see how it rotates the fan and the sorry the turbine and the compressor works and the compressor sucks in air through this part and sends it to the inlet manifold this is how it works here next is the turbo lag so what is the turbo lag i have explained it before uh, initial starting of a turbocharger is very uh, very hard 
so initial starting such as the exhaust gas has to be supplied uh, at sufficient temperature and velocity for turbocharger to start Up, apart from that turbo lag is the time required to change power up output in the response to throttle change noted noticed as a hesitation or slowed throttle response when accelerating as compared to a naturally aspirated engine so in a naturally aspirated engine we are getting the power based on the accelerator pedal itself okay but when using a turbocharger the problem is that we will notice that when we press the pedal itself there is a lag the power to reach the engine uh, the engine power to reach the wheels or we will notice a lag and after this lag period is completed you will see the vehicle jumps forward so if you have driven a turbocharged vehicle you will notice this difference okay not a significantly powerful turbocharger but a lower you can see in uh, sufficient vehicles and all you can see that turbocharger activates at about 2000 rpm to 3000 rpm in vehicles okay not immediately itself but powerful turbocharger will start at a higher uh, at a higher uh, sorry lower uh, gear uh, that is first gear itself turbocharger activates but in uh, smaller engines and all turbocharger uh, lag can be significantly observed okay these are due to inertia friction and compression load okay compressor load so exhaust gas i have already told you single cylinder is being used for uh, at a time produces exhaust instead uh, but in the case of a 16 cylinder engine or a 12 cylinder engine eight cylinder engines two cylinders may provide significant exhaust so as to run the turbine but a single exhaust provides only sufficient power and the load to run this compressor is much higher okay due to being a metallic part uh, the load will be much higher for the compressor to run so significantly pressure and sorry friction and inertia will be high okay inertia at rest will be very high friction uh, so it has to start running so that will also be uh, high so due to these factors turbo lag is observed okay the difference between supercharger and turbocharger i'll explain it in the uh, next class